Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so today we're here uh, to do our second vocab lesson. And uh, last week, let's do a quick little review of what we talked about last week. Last week we started with the word dilatory. And we talked about, really what we did is a introduction to what's called mnemonic devices. Uh, what that is is a way to remember what a word means based upon what it looks or sounds like. Uh, so we said that dilatory uh, is a word that describes someone who procrastinates. Let's see if I can fit it in here. Yes, okay. So someone who's dilatory is one who procrastinates. Now, and then we also talked about how we could isolate the word later, uh, L-A-T-O-R, within this word dilatory to help us remember that that's what it means. It means to save things until later or to procrastinate. So what we did there is we found something within the word that is directly tied to the definition. Uh, now today I want to try something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to work on the word extant and you'll see in a bit but the word extant is going to be a little bit different experience than the word dilatory. Um, so here's our word to start off with. Now, some of you may know, some of you may not know, the word extant means existing. Right? So if something is extant, that means it exists. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try to make uh, another note card for extant and try to come up with a good trick to remember the word just like we did with the word dilatory. So uh, let's go ahead and make the back of our note card. So I'll try to make a little bit of a neater card today. Use the straight line tool here. So as you know, the front of the card is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to have the word itself. And then the back of the card is going to have uh, the definition and it's going to have a trick. So on the back first we're going to say existing and then the second thing we want to have is our trick right? now when students first start to embrace this method of mnemonic devices uh, by the way by the way mnemonic is spelled in a very weird way m n E M O N I C, uh, but that's technically what we're doing is we're using a mnemonic device uh, to remember what words mean. Uh, now, getting back to the trick, most students when they first make a trick for extant uh, and, and they know that it means existing, they kind of hop on the most obvious part uh, of these two words, which is the ex similarity there. So uh, they'll say, "Okay, well, extant." has an EX and so does existing and there's their trick right well this isn't that great of a trick unfortunately although there is a similarity here between the EX and the EX there are so many words that start with EX that as you continue to learn words over time you're going to discover that you know, there's just too many words that start with EX for this to be a useful trick. So we need to try to find something a little bit more unique about the word extant. So I'm going to rewrite it for you. E-X-T-A-N-T. -T. Well, another thing that I notice about this word, and really kind of my first impression when I see this word, is the word ant. Right? And this whole idea of first impressions uh, is actually quite important because that's how you're going to be remembering these words. Uh, you want to look at the word, stare at it for a bit, and really try to see what pops into your head initially because chances are that's going to be what pops into your head when you see the word the next time and the next time. So when I look at this word extant, the first thing that I see is the word ant. Now the question is, how am I going to connect the word ant right, to its definition existing? Right? Uh, there's no real obvious connection. It's not like dilatory, right, where we said dilatory, right, and later 
was connected to the to the definition of uh, dilatory, uh, which was one who procrastinates. Uh, we were lucky in that sense, in that later is directly tied to procrastinating. Uh, now, the word ant is not really tied to the word existing. So it's our job to try to find some sort of connection between those two ideas. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do, and I want to see if you can kind of follow along a little bit. Now, I want you to kind of just sit back, relax, and imagine something for me. Uh, I want you to picture New York City, uh, let's say Midtown Manhattan, on a Monday morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. Everybody's in a rush, everybody's walking to work, uh, everybody's in a hurry, they've got their briefcases out, etc., etc. And underneath all of this, there's a little tiny ant on the sidewalk. So everybody's in a hurry to get to work, stomping on the sidewalk, not really paying attention. But underneath there's this tiny little ant. So I'm not a very good illustrator, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw somebody walking along. All right. <laughs> They're very tall. Uh, they got their got their briefcase in their hands, right? And they're they're going this way. They're just walking along. And everybody just keeps stomping stomping on this little tiny ant hill down here, right? And the ant inside is, you know, he's starting to get upset because everybody's stepping on his house and the the ceiling's caving in and uh, you know, it's Monday morning and he's got to go to work soon and, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. So the ant is getting annoyed. But he doesn't know what to do, you know, these, uh, these people are so much bigger than him. You know, what's he going to do? He can't, he can't stop them, right? Uh, so, you know, he tries to go back to his little newspaper and... People keep stomping, stomping on his house. So finally, he just gets fed up, right? The ant just gets completely fed up, and he decides, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go say something. You know, they might not hear me, but I'm gonna. Sh I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna shout at the top of my lungs. And so he climbs up to the top of his little ant hill as everybody's stepping on it, and he stands up as tall as he can, and he fills up his lungs with air. And, and what does he say? Well, I exist. I exist. Screams at the top of his lungs. <laughs> right, so I'll draw my little my little ant guy here. You may be bigger than me. You may be stepping on my ant hill, but you know what? I exist too. And you know what we've just done? This is a silly little story. It's kind of goofy, right? But what we just did is we just connected, right, the word ant to the idea of existing. So next time that you look at the word extant, the first thing that will happen, the first impression, will be that you see the word ant. And then when you see the word ant, I'm willing to bet that this little story is going to pop into your head about the ant in Manhattan who gets annoyed at everybody and exclaims, I exist. And then as one little uh, final thing that you could put on the back of your note card, uh, you know, one of the things you could put is an illustration. Um, you can also put a sentence if you like. This is the sentence that I like. I exist, exclaimed the ant. Uh, and I, I like this sentence too because it also works the uh, the word exclaimed in there. Uh, you know, so that's somewhat related to the to the ex and exist, uh, but more importantly. Uh, we connect it to the idea of an ant. Uh, and again, I said this is, you know, it's a goofy trick. It's kind of silly. I'm sure some of you are, are kind of having a chuckle at my expense right now. But at the same time, uh, the sillier something is, uh, the go goofier uh, your trick is, the more likely you're actually going to remember it long term. So uh, feel free to come up with your own little stories or visual images. Uh, that's really... Uh, th this is the type of trick that you can use for all sorts of different words uh, when you're studying for the SAT or the ACT. Uh, so that's extant, and uh, again, thanks very much for listening.